I'd like to start out by posing a question. Can a scientist logically look at nature and infer that it was intelligently designed as opposed to having been created by mechanisms of evolution? Now, first off, you need to understand that the contempt for the concept of intelligent design within the circles of academia is deep and fixed. And this is despite the fact that everyone, including atheists, recognize that life appears intelligently designed. Nevertheless, statements like this from Neil deGrasse Tyson are common. Intelligent design is a philosophy of ignorance. Now, these types of unreasonable claims are common and attest to the fact that evolution is a worldview that is defended with a strong religious flavor. Now, evolutionists might tell you that evolution isn't perfect, that there are a lot of unknowns, but that it fits best with the facts, that evolution has the best explanatory power of any scientific theory to explain origins. But what about intelligent design? You'll probably be told that intelligent design is worthless because it can't predict anything and has no explanatory power. You'll be told that intelligent design is not scientific for two reasons. First, you can't disprove intelligent design. And second, the nature of a designing intelligence can't be described or evaluated. Now, I'm going to show you some inconsistencies with this logic. First, you can't disprove God. Now, I agree that this is true. So if you demand that a theory must be falsifiable to be scientific, then I would agree that intelligent design is not science. But evolutionists don't agree with their own definition. The foundational arguments for evolution are attempts to disprove God. So evolutionary biologists, make up your mind. If God cannot be falsified, then stop trying to falsify God with your philosophical arguments. Things like molecular homologies, vestigial organs, embryology, imperfections of nature. If you can legitimately argue that nature shows a lack of intelligent planning, which is constantly being done, then you can legitimately argue that nature shows intelligent planning. Now, the second point, God cannot be scientifically evaluated. You can't see the creative process. Science draws all kinds of conclusions based on effect without observing or even understanding the process. For example, listen to this statement by Richard Dawkins. I had said that evolution is a fact in the same sense as it's a fact that the Earth orbits the Sun. And somebody wrote in about that saying, it isn't a theory the Earth moves around the Sun. It's a fact we can observe. Evolution is not. Now, I see why he says that, because you sort of think, well, the Earth's moving around the Sun all the time, and therefore you can observe it, whereas uh, you can't actually observe evolution because it happened a long time ago, or mostly it did. But really, you can't observe that the Earth moves around the Sun. What you observe is the changing seasons, and you infer that the Earth moves around the Sun because you have an interpretation, you have a theory to account for why you get changing seasons. And it's just the same way with evolution. It's true that we can't watch dinosaurs evolving. We can't watch fish emerging from the sea and becoming land animals. We have to make inferences. We make inferences on the basis of the evidence available in just the same way as we make inferences about the Earth's orbit. Okay, so here Dawkins makes a grandiose claim that the certainty of evolution is just as secure as the Earth's orbit around the sun. And then he correctly states that we don't actually observe the Earth's orbit, we, but we infer it, and that we know that gravity exists because of effect. And by the way, we don't actually know anything about the nature of gravity. And by the same token, we can infer the existence of an intelligent cause without knowing anything about the nature of that intelligence. Now, it's often stated that intelligent design has been searched for, but there's no evidence of this. And I look at disasters that afflict Earth and life on Earth. Volcanoes, hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes, disease, pestilence, um, congenital birth defects. You look at this list of ways that life is made miserable. So philosophers rose up and said, if there is a God, God is either not all powerful or not all good. I have no problems if, as we probe the origins of things, we bump up into the bearded man. If that shows up, we're good to go, okay? Not a problem. There's just no evidence of it.
And this is why religions are called faiths. Okay, Tyson here is claiming that there's no scientific evidence for God. And yet notice that the only evidence he brings up are philosophical arguments against God, that the earth is too cruel. He doesn't mention anything about the explanatory power of evolution. This is because he believes that there's no God because of a philosophical reason. Now, it's often claimed that even though nature looks like it's designed, evolutionary mechanisms create the illusion of design. The alleged reasons why there should be a God, such as the argument from design. Things look so beautifully designed, bananas and apples and things like that, and humans and, and kangaroos and so on. And they look as though they've been designed because that's what Darwinian natural selection does. It makes them look as though they're designed. Uh, it produces a very good simulacrum of design. I think that's the most important reason against that Darwin has exploded once and for all the argument from design. Now, I want to point out that Dawkins is always stating that there's no scientific evidence for God. And yet here he contradicts himself. He says, nature looks designed. However, he doesn't consider this as evidence for God because he believes that evolution can explain everything. But it's not the explanatory power of evolution. It's because of his philosophical rejection of intelligent design. If you read Dawkins' books and listen to his lectures, there's one overriding theme, his rejection of God. He rarely talks about any explanatory power of evolution. Now, I might add that the same criteria that evolution has applied to intelligent design also hold true for evolution. Evolution can't be disproven, and any time you cite an impossibility, you'll be accused of incredulity, or in other words, lack of faith. And the nature of evolution cannot be observed. All you have is a one-size-fits-all mechanism. Mutations plus natural selection plus millions of years. You observe things like peppered moths and antibiotic resistance and bacteria, and then this process is dogmatically extrapolated to every unknown complexity of biology. Now, it's commonly stated that Darwin erased the need for God, that science leads to atheism. I hope you don't fall for this. True science leads people to God. Look at this example. Uh, but I, I grew up in a, in a basically uh, in a family, three generations of atheists. Uh, they were not only atheists, they were very left wing. My parents were members of the American Communist Party in the 1930s, which is rare. <laughs> and so uh, their atheism was very strong, very militant. Uh, and that's what I grew up with. I, I uh, assumed that there was, could not be any such thing as God or not possible for there to be a God. Totally materialistic. My father was a chemist, scientist, so, you know, I, that was the worldview I grew up in. Uh, and, and, and also the same worldview I had when I went to college. But there was one catch, which was that what I was learning in science didn't jibe with the materialistic worldview. Uh -huh. Because the science I was learning did not support a strict atheism. It did not s support strict materialism. Okay. And, and that comes from quantum theory, and it comes from, you know, the observer effect and all sorts of things in physics, but it also came from what I was learning in biochemistry and about how life works. Right. It just seemed that saying evolution explains everything in life was too glib. You know, it was too easy. Now, I can assure you this isn't an isolated example. There are many accomplished scientists who've had similar experiences. In reality... Science is the atheist's worst nightmare. As Lord Kelvin stated, creative power is the only feasible answer to the origin of life from a scientific perspective. Nevertheless, a false belief persists that Darwin erased the need for God. Listen to this clip of Lawrence Krauss, a prominent astrophysicist and cosmologist. Before Darwin, Life was a miracle. Every form of life was specially created for its environment, and, and it was beautifully designed to exist that way. What Darwin showed was that it was plausible, based on his observations, that all life forms evolved from a single life form, form of life, and natural selection could produce the incredible diversity of life with the appearance of design. And he, he just showed it was plausible. He didn't know about DNA. He didn't know about genetics in detail. It was plausible based on, on all the evidence available to him at a time. And, and he wrote a beautiful book based on that. Mm -hmm. And so now, of course, we've learned over 150 years that that plausibility is, in fact, true. 
that we understand genetics. We now know that evolution is a fact. In fact, it's the foundation of modern biology. So before Darwin, intelligent design seemed plausible. But after Darwin, there was no need for God, particularly with an understanding of molecular biology and the true nature of inheritance. So what is this mechanism that has such amazing explanatory power? Mutations plus natural selection plus millions of years. Random mistakes in reproduction plus the filtering effect of natural selection. Now, I know people are going to argue with me about other mechanisms like genetic drift, gene flow, and sexual selection. But these are just smoke screens. These processes have no power to create fundamentally novel genetic information. So this marvelous mechanism says that if you take a worm and you throw 500 million years of mutations and natural selection at it, you can get a human. Now, this is not a caricature of evolution. Man is claimed to have evolved from a marine worm over a period of about 500 million years. So I hope you'll keep this mechanism in mind when you hear that evolution has the best explanatory power over any other theory of origins. I'd like to turn your attention now to an example in nature that you can look at and determine for yourself which hypothesis makes the most sense. The mechanisms of evolution versus intelligent design. Now I have here a tail feather from a magnificent bird from Indonesia, the great Argus. And you'll notice that the feather has these peculiar spots that have the appearance of 3D. And you'll notice that they're seen on both sides of the feather. Now, if you had asked an evolutionist, how was this created? You might hear sexual selection, but I'm not asking how it was preserved in the population. I want to know the origin of this feather. How was it created through the mechanisms of evolution? Now let's look at this design under higher magnification, bearing in mind the central Darwinian mechanism. Notice how these rounded spots are countershaded at the edges with gradual lightening of the color toward the center. Also, there's a discrete off-centered spot, and this creates an illusion of light reflected from a convex curved surface. Okay, let's look at the central Darwinian mechanism. Random mutations plus natural selection plus time. Remember, mutations are random, and given the size of a bird's genome and known mutation rates, the chances of one mutation appearing in one generation to affect the feather color in any way is one in billions. Now look at the spot on one of these feathers. How many possible ways are there to color this spot? If you took a can of paint and randomly splattered color on a canvas and figured out a selection mechanism to somehow filter out every inferior pattern, you're gonna never end up with something like this. And why? Because there are billions and billions of possible designs. But it gets worse. The feather is not formed without color and then color applied later. The feather grows from a central shaft with closely spaced barbs growing from the shaft. And each barb is colored individually. In other words, a genetic code has to direct the coloration of each filament in a specific way to result in a perfect composite image when viewed from a distance. Now, I might add that if you look at this design, it'd be a challenge for most intelligent human beings to paint something like this with their best efforts. Why? Because there are millions and millions of ways to mess up. So which mechanism has better explanatory power? Deliberate intelligent creation or the crude mechanisms of evolution? You decide. Thank you again for tuning in. In future presentations, I'm going to continue to dismantle neo-Darwinian theory piece by piece until there's nothing left of it.